Abigail had led Hoagie up to a hill not too far away from the bar, but just enough distance for him to comfortably let go of his emotions. Once they sat down on the greasy mound, she hugged him close as tears practically began pouring down his face. Hoagie buried his face into her shoulder, soaking her sleeve, but she didn't mind at this very moment. He needed this. There, there. I hope they'll be missing with... I doubt they'll be messing with you ever again, she said quietly while stroking him on the head. Still, it was a punk move to make fun of someone who just was trying to overcome some grief. Hoagie pulled away and tried to wipe some of his tears away. Yeah, if Nigel were still here with us, he would have really shown them. No one messes with Sector V. I just feel weaker without him here, Hoagie sniffed. But you aren't going anywhere, are you, number five? In turn, Abigail then proceeded to give him the biggest snuggle he could muster. I would never leave your side. We may not know how long, but I'm always here. You know that. Hoagie's face was blushing bright red as he hugged her back, smiling. In a few moments, Kuki and Wally showed up. There you are. Took us a while to find you two, especially since Wally was still trying to compose himself, Kuki said with her arms around Wallaby's shoulders. Come sit with us. Looks like the stars are nice to gaze at in this area. Abigail gestured the two over to the spot as Kuki sat by Abby and Wally sat down by Hoagie, who placed an arm around his best friend's shoulder, patting him gently by means of consultation. The four gazed up at the billions of stars illuminating the night sky, accompanied by a full moon. Gee, I wonder if the stars are even prettier up there in outer space, Kuki audibly whispered. If they are, then number one must be having the time of his life with his new teammates, Hoagie said, lowering his head a little. I sure hope they're treating him well up there, Kuki whimpered. I just wondered if Nigel still misses us as much as we miss him, Wally weakly sniffed. If only I had one final moment with him now, i just tell him that. I bet he remembers our love for him, Abigail thought aloud, and all the times we spent with him. He's probably looking out of his window right now, thinking about us, I'm sure. Nigel and his friends danced and sprinted merrily through a meadow, laughing and shouting to each other as they did so. They raced clouds together, rolled down a hill, and then stomped a lie in a tall grass. It was some of the most fun that he had had in a long time. Nigel closed his eyes and exhaled deeply, only to be surprised with a sudden whoosh of cold air that didn't seem to end, along with asteroids flying through the ozone layer. Nigel panicked and frantically called, looked around, calling his friends names, but they were nowhere to be seen. Looking back forward, he could have sworn that in the distant sky, he saw himself. Only this Nigel looked more deranged and malicious, like he was ready to kill everything in sight. Farewell, adult tyranny, the figure said before cackling maniacally as Nigel saw an asteroid hurling right before him. He shut his eyelids tight, and all at once he felt himself shooting up in a freezing sweat with a rapid heartbeat. It was all a dream. Rise and shine, number one. Today's the day, a rather strange-sounding voice said from a speaker above his bed. He looked over at the rack and hangers and what seemed to be his new clothes. Nigel sighed and got up from under his blankets. He took the clothes from the rack and went to the bathroom-esque room, changing from his spacesuit into his red-designed hoodie, open-toed shoes, and gray shorts, along with his slick-looking futuristic shades. Nigel walked out of the room, but before he left for the recruiting, he walked with his backpack and pulled something out from it, putting it on the pouch of his hoodie. He was nervous as nervous could be, but he was ready for this. As Nigel exited the new bedroom, he stepped onto a circular platform which instantly ascended into a dark room of some sort. After a moment of looking around himself, he was greeted by a white rectangular screen that popped up before him, and a strange electronic alien voice that emitted from it. Sit salutations, number one. We're all very excited to finally have you with us at this time, the voice said. Nigel gulped and said, Pleasure to meet you. Then another scream popped up on the first one. And we are beyond honored to be such a dedicated child like yourself to our mothership, the higher, fit, the higher pitched voice chirped. And in such a dire situation of adult tyranny like this, the energy, dedication, and leadership skills of yours are very well needed here. That's why we at the Galactic Kids Next Door had gladly chosen you to help save many kids across the entire universe. Wow, this should be fun, Nigel said, awestruck and excited at what he had just been told. But, before we begin, the first voice abruptly added, you need to state the Galactic Kids Next Door oath. Now, 
Repeat after us. Instantly, several glowing white screams appeared all around Nigel as they started to speak. I, Nigel Uno, they started. I, Nigel Uno, Nigel repeated, will obey the Galactic Kids Next Door regulations. Will obey the Galactic Kids Next Door regulations. And abide by them for the planet. And abide to them for the planet. That I, Nigel Uno, that I, Nigel Uno, come from shall no longer command me, come from shall no longer command me, and so I declare my loyalty, and so I declare my loyalty, for the sake of the children around the universe to combat adult tyranny, for the sake of the children around the universe to combat adult tyranny. Galactic Kids Next Door rule! Galactic Kids Next Door rule! And with that, Nigel Uno was officially declared as operative of the Galactic Kids Next Door from now until the very end. In fear and surprise, as your eyes widen, your mouth goes dry with each battered breath. You try to scream, your mind begs to be glued to your computer screen. The killers they slash, the tapes burn and crash, the cartridge you bought will be your final haunt. The rituals of hate will seal your fate, the tears you shed will be from a fear-gripping portrait nightmarish gore-filled terrorizing hateful burning violent rage-inducing knives slashing blood splattering silent screams only time will tell if you will escape this online hell your horror-filled obsessions will come with its own regressions your pathetic screams will not be heeded in any way because your nightmares will come at any day.